Hey everybody and welcome to No Signal Live in the Studio. I'm super excited to be with you all today. Um, we are going to be working on a new piece that we actually kind of sketched out in uh, in September, if you can believe it. It's been, <laughs> I don't know where the past few months have gone. Uh, but it's a piece called They Borrow Our Eyes. And like I said, the Sudra's Violin Project, which is my new solo project. Um, so we're going to be doing some work on this. Uh, we're going to start out by doing some flavor crystals in the intro, and uh, then we're going to go from there. Uh, maybe do some live bass, maybe do some live guitar. Should be fun. And we're going to go for about an hour and a half. So, all right. So uh, we always start out by listening to, uh, to what we have so far. So this is the starting point, the kind of sketch, just with uh, some placeholder, uh, placeholder parts and instrumentation and uh, placeholder drums. Um, so really starting just from the, from the barest framework. So uh, let's give that a listen. got here uh, we've got three oops <laughs> we've got three guitar tracks we have his finger picked guitar and a couple of uh, distorted guitars which are um, using a, kind of a, a crunchy um, distorted uh, kind of um, kind of sound for uh, for the big bits and you'll notice we're coming in um, with the same uh, kind of chord the same four chords it's uh, E minor a major B minor B flat minor um, just this part, let's solo it. Alright, so something just really, really simple. And originally I had thought about um, starting with the bass, um, but uh, Suzanne, which we just finished working on, um, kind of comes in with a prominent bass. So I thought we'd start with some energy. Um, but, 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 uh, I do want to uh, kind of lead in with a, with a kind of sense of unease um, that maybe uh, reinforces the chord structure or uh, puts, the, uh, puts the listener in a, certain, in a certain place, which is kind of uh, unsettling. So I had a couple of ideas for that. Uh, my first idea is that, uh, well, I think we're going to blend some different stuff. But the first thing I was thinking is we could take this uh, guitar part here this bit right here and uh, reverse it and I uh, thought that might be kind of interesting so uh, let's do that I'm gonna uh, take the audio here and simply paste it in on this new track and uh, all right and um, we're using uh, one of my custom patches for guitar I believe it's Valentine guitar inspired by my bloody Valentine of course let's hear it just on its own all right so uh i want to reverse this so we're going to go into the region and uh not see anything at all huh what's up with that 
No, no, no. How about here? More. And should be a reverse round in here somewhere, and I don't see it. Logic is such like a, uh, a kind of a complicated, why is that many regions? Um, logic is so complicated sometimes. All right, let's pick a, uh, temporarily pick a different patch here and see if uh, something's going on there. Should be able to say uh, reverse audio and I do not see, let's see, what if we do this? Uh, can we do any kind of reverse from here? Don't see it. Really not sure. <laughs> and y'all, I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear I did this yesterday and everything was fine. All right, we're gonna, uh, maybe we can do something um, a little different. Let me, uh, I'm just gonna keep floundering the interface for a second. All right, reverse, here we go. There it is. All right, so we have a reverse on here and I'm gonna put it back on Valentine guitar. You can hear the reverse. All right, and when we lay that on top of the uh, of the other guitar, So uh, that's the start of something interesting. Um, but notice uh, here where uh, uh, where this starts. Oops, uh, where this starts. Um, it is uh, it doesn't come in at the same time as um, the intro. So I'm going to grab everything and drag it all. We'll give ourselves about four measures, and then we'll uh, we'll take this guitar and bring it over like that. And now it should start um, in a slightly different place. Let's see, about here. Okay, one second. Uh, kind of fumbling with things today, y'all. Sorry about that. All right, we're gonna put that on the fourth measure. There we go. So um, now we take this, we line it up there, and it's going to come in first. Alright, now what I want to do next is uh, I want to line these chords up with, uh, with a chord that's in the opening um, crunch guitar. Um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to cut, um, we're going to cut these up and slice them up. Uh, we're going to get rid of that, that, oops, so we're just going to chop up in between the, uh, in between the chords. All right, so we're starting out on this guitar on an E minor, so let's go down here. In our uh, in our reverse guitar, hey everybody in chat, thank you all for being here today. All right, so um, this first one that's actually our B flat minor. So let's make that one last. Um, this is going to be our B minor. Um, this is going to be our, uh, oops, this is going to be our E, I believe, and this is going to be our A major. So I'm going to line these up with, uh, so that they fade in coming into those notes, uh, coming into the other guitar part. So I'm just going to simply line them up like this. And let's give that a listen. That's kind of what I was going for. a bit off. 
just drag that until the end of it lines up with where the other chord starts. Palm right there. Put, uh, we're gonna do some different effects on this reverse. For one thing, I want it to be uh, much, 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 much quieter. Um, so um, I'm gonna go to the compressor. I'm gonna drop the gain down, first of all. for. So let's unsolo these and see how they sound uh, all together with the rest of the instruments. Oops, unsolo. Sign everything back up here. Okay, and we're gonna extend this little intro. And because I am me, we have to, of course, uh, make all the track icons exactly what I want. Okay, so um, let's do a little bit of a different effect on here. Um, we're gonna keep most of the settings, um, but I'm gonna do something different, maybe with Delay Designer, which currently is a filter pan. Um, so. Um, Let's, uh, let's mess with a little bit and see what we can do in terms of blending the sounds. Ouch. Sorry about that, y'all. The compressor is already it. All right, we're going to put a limiter on here. It's a little... Uh... Well, what if we get rid of the intro guitar and just, uh, we're gonna mute that. And um, just, oops, just listen, just have the reverse in there. Let's give that a try. Okay, I think that's getting closer. So I'm gonna drag all this stuff over. It's coming in a little bit later than I want. All right, let's try that. That is getting closer. I do want some tail on this uh, on this last. Um, on this last little bit here, because when you hear it, I want it to spill over just a little bit more. Um, and we're gonna do that by uh, sending it into space. Um, y'all know my favorite, uh, y'all know my favorite um, effect is uh, that delay designer. I mean the uh, sp um, space, ah, uh, space designer. It's what we always use to put stuff in space. And let's uh, let's solo that and hear what kind of tail we can put on it. We have like a 1.3 second um, tail right now. We'll probably do that a little longer. Let's see. That is a nice long tail. Uh, let's do something a little interesting with it. That might be better. It kind of rises a little bit there, right? Yeah, so let's see how that feels in C2. Quality to it, right? 
All right. Um, I want that the tail on that last piece to be just a little bit, um, just a little bit longer. So we're going to go into automation and go into space designer, and we are going to make uh, the wet output much much higher at the end. We're going to add automation, and again, automation all it means is um, basically automating the same thing that you would do on a uh, on a mixing board except you do it programmatically and you have a lot of like really fun control and it's repeatable. So I'm gonna bump up the wet output there. So solo that track in here. I'm not quite doing what I want it to do, and I'm wondering if it's, uh, hmm. all right. Uh, let's also uh, do a delay designer on here. Um, that's a little bit different. A uh, second, uh, second delay. And of course we're gonna use our friend delay designer, and uh, let's, uh, to a filter. Hmm. No. Yeah, that's much more than I want. Uh, but of course, that is a very, very long delay. And uh, we're going to let's delete this automation. And let's, uh, let's put the automation here. Final delay designer, and we're gonna say the wet signal. And we're gonna start it out um, all the way down. And it's just gonna come up at the end. Let's hear it. for a little bit. Oops. Let's try that. See if it see if it fades out clean. Let's that in C2. That's getting closer and that might be, uh, that might be good enough for now.
So, uh... and it has kind of a vocal quality to it, right? Um, I want to try one other thing. We're going to go into Space Designer. Right now we're using Ka Ka Ka, which is one of my uh, one of mine. But uh, Space Designer lets you do some like super interesting things that you may not um, imagine are, uh, are doable <laughs> with, uh, with Simply Reverb. Um, but check this out when we're soloed again. Turn off that final delay so we can hear things a little more cleanly. Alright, I want to make it just a little bit, uh, just a little bit odd. Um, so we're just going to try out some different patches here. I'm gonna set up a cycle region while we uh, while we try out stuff here. Hey, folks in chat, say hi, okay? Let me know you're there. See some new folks in there, Monk13. Thanks for being here. I think it's your first time, right? Alright, maybe that one's hard in T2. Monk 13, you asked, are these programmed drums? Um, yeah, uh, they are programmatically generated. Yeah, let's take a look here. I'm using uh, Logic's built in uh, drummer track, and you have a lot of configuration options here. You can pick your uh, different beat presets, you can pick your different um, drummer. Um, so we have a whole library of drummers here, and uh, yeah, um, so those are machine drug drums, and um, they are different by part. You can see, watch the settings down here, change. So you can see I'm doing some dynamics by uh, um, by um, changing these configurations, um, kick and snare patterns, tom patterns, fills the whole bit. Um, and uh, they're more or less placeholders right now. We're gonna do some tuning on those. Thanks for asking. All right. Um, so, uh, interestingly, this is actually the third time that I am taking, uh, this fundamental component, this fundamental song, um, and turning it into something else. The first time I, uh, when I first wrote it, it was somewhere around 1991, 1992. And, uh, I could, I could never get it exactly right, but I had like, uh, kind of the name and uh, I called it The Room, and it was inspired after reading uh, a story of the same name by Sartre. Um, I was just a baby existentialist back then. Um, and then uh, I ended up using uh, the same chord progression and the same general sound uh, for my pre-transition solo work, um, which was Dust in a Shadow, and that one turned into a song called The Whirlwind. Uh, which we are going to listen to um, at a break at some point here. And uh, now this is, yeah, this is the third time uh, using this particular progression. Um, and uh, the reason I said all that, aside from just like giving you all some context, is that in that original, um, uh, this again was the early 90s, so I was using a tape machine and I got myself like a, a two or three channel, two or four channel mixer. And I would hook up a cassette player as one of the inputs, and uh, I had like a bunch of uh, a bunch of cassettes of like sound effects and stuff because I would uh, I would often do collage work. 
Um, so uh, the original version of this song actually started up with like some really, really fucked up uh, samples of horses. <laughs> And I thought just as a, uh, as a kind of tribute, um, to, uh, to that, uh, to the origin of, uh, of this, uh, of this piece, I thought, well, why not? Let's, uh, let's do some, <laughs> let's do some weird stuff with, uh, samples of horses. Oh, it sounds so silly when I say it out loud now, but, mm, okay. So, you know, various things here. And uh, what I want to do is we're going to run all of these um, to a send. And uh, if y'all uh, if y'all have been here before, you might remember you might know that uh, a send is simply routing audio to a distinct channel, and then you can uh, you can um, you can uh, put the same kind of effects or whatever uh, whatever um, signal chain changes that you want. So here's the new track I, I laid in, and we're gonna call it uh, Horse Space. And um, we're gonna put an effect on, on here, and let's just start with uh, Space Designer, maybe. Ah, Wirehead Arts, I see you there with your punning. Too bad we can't kick out our own mods, right? Love you, friend. All right, so let's try something like that, just temporary. And uh, we're gonna go to um, this track. All right, this one is soloed. Um, and uh, we're gonna send over here, this little, um, this little control here um, is, uh, is how much of the signal you send dry, which is unaffected versus wet. So we're gonna bring in um, about uh, minus four dB of the effect. And when you send an effect on an aux on a on a on a send, you want the wet to be all um, all the way up. So uh, let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, you hear that? Well, let's do some warp shit. So let's do the same thing for all of the other horse tracks. Send them all to bus seven and put them all relatively the same volume. And uh, let's solo them all for now. And let's uh, just kind of space them out a bit. And see how they blend. And we're just kind of staggering them randomly because the beat doesn't matter. Um, yeah, that sounds pretty fucked up. Love it. Um, so let's take all of these and bring them way, way down in the mix. Do 
this. Take all of our horse tracks, which are here through here, and we're gonna drag all of the uh, all of them down. <laughs> Seven in the horse space. Uh, let's let's take the wet signal down just a little. Oh, that is pretty low. Um, all right, let's put a let's put a, a gain plug in there, uh, which is probably not um, what you're supposed to do. But and let's bring the gain down. <laughs> are so loud when they're all pulled down so much but okay uh, let's put gain directly in the signal chain for each of these and bring that gain down and hopefully this works that's better all right and what we're gonna do is put all of these in a track stack in a folder um, that is a summing stack and uh, now we can um, control them all from here and bring that volume down again. You know, I thought about making a, uh, a logic icon for a horse and I didn't do it. All right, let's hear it all in C2. Let's turn off the soloing on all these puppies and unmute and see how it sounds in C2. We gotta drag these puppies out and get them all the way to the eighth measure. Um, so what we're gonna do is double some of these puppies up, repeat with them, and just like kind of randomly space them around. Um, we might also reverse the audio on some of them. Um, I uh, I took a I, I saw a, a documentary about how. Um, horror movie or how uh, movie soundtracks are made and um i completely forgot where i was going with that oh my god okay never mind <laughs> like that kind of like that uh, let's uh, let's hook up our sound a little bit more though on all these puppies on um, they're all going to bus seven uh, so let's add a new bus and select them all so we do it on the entire operation and let's send out to a brand new bus and we're gonna put some more uh, some more stuff on that bus 15 we'll find that over here and we'll call that horse. And uh, let's put, uh, 
let's uh let's do maybe a delay on it and we can do some uh like pitches and uh we will uh we're gonna set each the uh, send on each of those to be a little bit different so uh, let me let me solo this particular track and let's see how it sounds Something like that is what I'm looking for. Oh, I remember what I was going to say about the horror movies. Um, the, uh, the woman who did sound design for Top Gun uh, really hated... Uh, they did some field recordings of jet engines. And um, she absolutely hated the way they sounded because to her they didn't sound... Uh, big and powerful and like people imagine jet engines would sound like so what she did is uh, I wish I could remember her name uh, she went to a zoo and recorded various animal sounds uh, she recorded uh, elephants tigers lions bears um, ended up doing heavy processing on those including um, reversing some layers and uh, made that made that really iconic sound um, so it's really interesting for a lot of creatures in uh, movies and TV. Um, that's in the, that's how they end up uh, making the creatures roar or whatever the other sound is. Actually, by recording live animals uh, and uh, processing the hell out of them. Thought that was kind of interesting. All right, so let's hear how this sounds again. Too extreme, especially because we're gonna, gonna mess with all of them. But of the wet signal to that. Yep. So let's hear all of them together. and uh, more of them. trouble with the game here. Um, okay, I'm going to select all these. Let me add a game plugin to all of them. Can I do that? Yep. Okay. Set the 
this independently on each of these. Maybe that's, yep, 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 that's what's happening. All right, we're just gonna kind of randomly set some values here um, on each of these, bring the game down. Sorry, this is boring. All right, that one is good. That one's good. And uh, we use gain um, instead of simply volume um, because uh, if we want to adjust the volume later, it's like a pain in the ass to go and change all of the uh, all the automation. So. All right, let's hear that. What do y'all think? What do you think of that? Is it too much? Not sure. All right, y'all, I need a short break. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a Twinkie break. And if uh, this is your first time, oops, this is your first time on the show, um, at a certain point, uh, maybe halfway to point, we take a step back. Usually we'd listen to what we have, but uh, we've been listening to that intro over and over again. So instead, I am going to, uh, um, I'm going to play uh, one, of, uh, one of the songs that I've been doing in a collaboration with my friend Craig Chin. Um, who does a, uh, a lot of noise, ambient, stuff like that. Um, so we're gonna take a break. We're gonna eat our delicious golden cream-filled snack cake. Um, and uh, looks like I'll be back in about four and a half minutes. So uh, y'all um, stick around and we'll have more music, more music making in just a second.
absolutely everything that I've done. All right, so I was thinking we might want to re-record the, uh, the finger pick guitar because like I said, a lot of these are placeholders right now. And uh, so if I solo that finger pick guitar, um, you can, um, can kind of hear where, what we're starting with. And again, it's not terrible, but it's not what I want. And uh, we want to continue it through the whole song. So what I'll do is unsolo that. And we're going to use, uh, surprise, surprise, the uh, the St. Vincent uh, Special Edition Music Man. And uh, we're going to do a little picking. We're actually not going to do finger picking. Uh, I was messing around with this yesterday and kind of, uh, kind of like the way it sounded with a pick instead. So um, we're going to uh, go back to the start a little bit, give ourselves some uh, little tail. And uh, here's the uh, progression, E minor. Here we go. The C minor, then down to the A. Then our, um, our uh, mess up B minor. B flat minor. All right, and if any of y'all are guitarists, you might be wondering like, why the hell am I playing a B minor up here? Instead of uh, doing a bar chord, and the simple answer is I can't do bar codes very well, um, bar chords very well. So that leads me to like different places on my guitar that maybe other people mm, wouldn't uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't go to. So uh, hey, uh, Wirehead Arts, type um, exclamation point Saint Vincent for info on the guitar if you're interested. And uh, all right, let's let's redo this guitar track here. <laughs> Very barely hear that. Let's bring that up some. Ah, uh, I have a slight delay, and Logic does that sometimes. So uh, what I'm going to do is just restart Logic real quick here. Sorry. All this, uh, you know, all the equipment, all the wiring, everything is super complicated. So uh, when I first started um, streaming, I was like super stressed about any kind of uh, any kind of problem. Most of the time, restart it, restart whatever. It comes together. Yeah, that's a lot better. Let's go to that compressor again and drop it. Down. Oh, we already dropped it down. Uh, it's super, super loud. Weird, I don't see anything uh, making it that loud. Uh, let's throw a limiter on, maybe. mode. 
Here we go, low latency mode. All right, fixed. Sorry about that, y'all. So uh, let's try that again. Oops. Start about it here, and uh, let's get back to it. To, uh, to the chord instead of straight. Uh, You know, this is how stuff works. This is how it happens. It's uh, it's doing multiple recordings. It's uh, it's uh, you know doing the uh, doing the performance over and over until you get it the way you want. So all part of the process, y'all. Set up a cycle region and just try, uh, just try this over and over for a bit. Hey, nice to see you here, friend. Um, thank you for uh, the compliment on the tone. Um, let's uh, let's do one more one more pass. I think we're getting pretty close here.
Let's go, sir. thing here I have this cycle region set and if you take a look at the audio here see how it cuts off and uh, I actually want to leave um, a longer tail on that so we get a nice fade all right um, that's all right so we're gonna do one more pass at it and uh, hopefully this is a good one
I believe we finally got it. Oh, so sorry, I have my wrong camera on. I've been watching, uh, watching Logic. All right, uh, let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's see what, how things sound here. <laughs> Share it all together. Things are coming along pretty well here. Um, kind of like the intro, kind of like the reverse guitar. Um, nothing's been mixed yet, and that is absolutely fine um, because that's uh, we're not at that part of the process yet. Um, so I want to hear that intro again. <laughs> Sounding, uh, that's sounding pretty much how I want it to sound. Um, wondering if uh, maybe we want to uh, re-record the bass part and do the same thing that we uh, that we just did with the finger picker guitar. Um, just do some additional takes and uh, see what happens. Um, the other thing we could potentially do is uh, I thought about um, adding a, a piano that would uh, that would tail the bass. Um, but let's uh, let's start out just by re-recording our bass part. And um, I'm gonna make a, a duplicate track here um, just to uh, preserve the old ones. And uh, so we're gonna record enable this and this. And uh, we're gonna go over to the Lachlan bass. Um, it was recommended by my friend uh, Panda Brand, uh, Frederick Wells. Um, he's a, an amazing, an amazing, amazing bass player. And uh, when my old bass, my old cheap bass crapped out, I asked him like, what should I replace it with? And he said, take a look at Lackland. So this is a, uh, a, uh, a semi-hollow, um, regular four string bass. Um, I think it has a, a really great tone. It feels very comfortable to play. And uh, it sounds like this. Alright, 
right, so let's say we uh, let's say we do a new uh, uh, redo our bass part, and we're gonna start at the same place um, that the guitar started. Although I am wondering if maybe we want to uh, to start it even with all the sound effects as uh, something underneath. You know what? Let's give that a try first. Let's uh, let's see how that feels. And miss my cue. It felt pretty good. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think I got that okay. Uh, let's do a couple more takes, just to uh, get some get a feel here. Yeah, I'm really liking how that's coming along. Um, we are uh, we are almost at the 4:30 mark, um, so uh, I think it might be best for us to wrap up. And uh, let's just uh, let's just play the first uh, through the first bridge just to get a feel for kind of where we are. And uh, I'll probably uh, be uh, uh, working on this again a little bit during the week. I do studio days on Wednesday offline, and then uh, come back to it next weekend. So. Let's hear what we have, and uh, then we'll uh, close out with something special.
but that feels like it's coming along really, really well. I think uh, I think what I might do in between is uh, continue the base all the way through, and uh, um, I'll save the uh, the work on the on the big distorted guitars for next time. I am feeling pretty good um, now. Uh, in case y'all don't know. Um, I upload every work in progress, every snapshot from every session, online or offline, and uh, and I put it on SoundCloud. Um, and you will find links to all that on SoundCloud from my uh, Creative Stuff website, which is nosignal.zone. And uh, I will uh, I'll post a link on Twitter and Instagram uh, to where you can get the uh, where you can get the work in progress as well. And I do that for every single every single one of the songs that I work on. I always uh, create a playlist on SoundCloud and print every version and create a playlist so you can actually go through and see how the song evolves over time. Because uh, you know this whole project is about uh, showing your work, showing the process. And uh, I think that might be interesting to y'all. All right, so as promised, we are going to close out with uh, the, uh, the second version of this particular song, uh, which I did sometime in the mid-2000s, I'm not sure. Again, pre-transition, and you're going to hear a voice that uh, is a voice from the past, and uh, a voice that used to bother me, and a voice that now I'm... I'm a, I accept as a, just me from a, from a different point in my life. Anyway, love you all. Thank you so much. Hope to see you next Sunday. Uh, thanks to the mods. Um, hey, Venal Resting, Venal Resting Place. Good to see you here. Um, you were just in time for the outro. Uh, thanks y'all uh, for being here again. See you next Sunday. And, uh, so happy to have you all here. So, um, Let's listen to the whirlwind. I was 16 And I'd never known evil or good I spent my time wandering So deep in the darkening wood And one day I found him All alone in the towering Sadness and madness and smoke And he showed me The spaces between all the worlds Such things that he told me His secrets were slowly unfurled
days are gone now And I know much more than I would wish Of the wonders and horrors That lie just below what exists Oh, hey, Mods, uh, who should we raid? Who's live right now? Now I'm the wise fool And I'm off in the search for my grail I'm in the whirlwind of the madness that finally prevailed. I am old now, and I wander alone in the oaks. I am still searching through the sadness and madness and smoke. 